Hi everybody, it's Scott Dillon here from the SCP Cloud Platform, North American uh, Center of Excellence. And this evening I want to give you a quick glimpse into how and what the Mobile Development Kit is and how it can be used in conjunction with other services and specifically how it can be used in conjunction with CAP. So yesterday I posted a quick you know, introduction to CAP, so we'll do a quick review of that. But um, so you can see, I just, I'll describe the scenario with the following slide. So on the left and on the right, we basically have two UI options for what would be a very trivial safety incident app, uh, which by the way, will be the basis for upcoming technical academy, but that's another story. Um, in this particular case, what we'd like to do is create a simple application that can capture a photo, record the date and the time and the category and things like that and have it assigned to someone. So in order to build this, we're not using, although we could, but we're not using the ECC employee health and safety module or anything like that. We're gonna build it from scratch. So we need to have, as per the previous whiteboard, um, a user interface. We need to have some services. Because as, there, as everybody knows, a lot of the uh, services inside the cloud platform use OData and REST. So we need to have some services and we need to have a place to store the data. So first and foremost, uh, the two user interface options that we will quickly see on the left-hand side, the mobile development kit, what is it? Well, basically it's a, an approach to building mobile applications uh, designed by SAP that allows you to provide metadata, which is then used by our mobile client to render a native application, option number one. And option number two, which is great for online applications using straight up uh, UI5. And then the question is, well, where does the data come from and how does it get provisioned? So in the middle uh, swim lane here, you can see that we have something referred to as CAP, which is the SCP Cloud Platform Application Programming Model. And it's essentially a very modular, very flexible framework that is now available on top of SCP Cloud Platform. And it's a perspective embedded into the, actually it's a template, excuse me, embedded into the web IDE where you can generate core objects like database structures, like services for CRUD, create, read, update, and delete by using the SCP uh, CDS notation, core data services. So you basically identify the what and you kind of get away from what the how is. So you specify, hey, I need a table for a safety incident. I need a table for employee and you basically def list out your attributes and then the framework takes over and connects and then generates the how, the, you know, the, the HANA syntax and things like that. So without further ado, what does that look like? So if I pop out to a browser and I go to here and I showed this quickly yesterday, but I'll just show it again. So when you're inside of the um, web IDE and you go here, click all categories and then under, when you have um, Cloud Foundry selected, you will see another one, a new one, excuse me, called SAP Cloud Platform Business Application. And so then when you select that, you have the ability to then identify what your services would be and what your data structures would be. So in this case, this data model.cds, I've got one here called safety incident. So if I want to create a safety incident, I need things like who is it reported by, category, the incident, things like that. And you see, I have this managed keyword here, which basically in behind the scenes without the developer having to specify what it is, adds fields to the structure, specifically created by, updated by, created at, updated at. And we don't have to do anything to get that. It just comes along for the ride more or less when you're using the framework. And another one is this key ID, UUID, which basically generates um, a service for us that's automatically invoked whenever we create a new safety incident and it generates the, uh, the key for us automatically. And then you can see down here, I have another one for employee and it has a first name, a last name. And I'm saying here a success factors ID and then another UUID. 
but then we have this association to employee. So I've got those things highlighted out. And then if I look inside the service definition, I've got one service called incident service, and then I've got um, three entities specified as part of that service. And in both of those cases, when I do um, a, a, sorry, a build, if I build that, it'll pop out, connect to the database, in this case, the trial environment, creates it, the table structures inside of HANA, does its thing. And the same thing on the server side, when I would run this uh, guy as Java application, it runs out, sorry, it, it uh, reaches out, builds a service, generates whatever code needs to be required, and then I get a, a create, read, update, and delete via REST and OData, and it gives me the URL right here. So if I click on that URL, I can see now the three um, uh, entities, collections that are present. And if I put in here dollar sign metadata, I can see what happened uh, with respect to the OData generation. So here's incident service, and you can see right away, I've got customer, employee, and safety incident. And then safety incident, those were the four fields that we talked about um, being generated because of the manage by keyword. And then I got some attributes, and then I also have this navigation property um, to link it to employee, which is kind of nice. So anyway, so I've got a, a fully functioning OData service that was basically generated for me by using those uh, two structures, basically about 40 lines of code. But then the question became uh, that came into me was, okay, so if I use CAP, CAP takes care of the persistence layer, takes care of the service layer really nicely. And you can even do things like, um, you know, link it to an external service as an example. But anyway, it, it takes care of those two layers really, really nice. And then the question would be, how do I link it then to, or how do I use it in conjunction with the mobile development kit? So here is the, um, let's pop over to the mobile development kit, the mobile service, excuse me. And so when you pop into mobile services with an SAP Cloud Platform, you will see we have this uh, section here called Native Hybrid and where you define your uh, mobile applications. And then when you click on one of them, you can see underneath um, these assigned features, you'll have one called Connectivity. And right here, you see we have EHS underscore APM, and then you have this URL. And basically what we're doing now is we're using the connectivity service inside a cloud platform, which allows us to specify uh, connection points where we get our data from. And if you remember, if you were uh, pretty keen to remember that URL, it's DUIA12PA7 with a whole bunch of other characters underneath it. And if we go back, you'll see it's the same one here. So basically what we're doing is we're telling the mobile service and the, specifically the mobile client, hey, here's the URL where we're gonna get the data. So this is part of the configuration and, and we've got a garage session out there on that. So cloudplatform.scp.com slash events. You can watch the one uh, that we've done uh, out there. We've done a couple of mobile ones now, but watch one of the one or two of those and you'll see how that gets configured from the scratch. And then uh, the second part of it is, well, how do I actually build the app? So in the case of a UI5 application, I think a lot of people are more familiar with UI5, but at the end of the day, we did build out a UI5 uh, safety incident application, which is shown here. And so at the, on the main page, this is showing the list of incidents, you know, that are being rendered from that uh, OData service. And if I hit create new incident, I can take a picture as an example. Uh, I think uh, because I'm using the uh, video software, it won't activate the camera. But um, you can see here, there's some categories, network, I can put a description. Assigned to is coming back from that OData service as well. And then we've got an asynchronous or synchronous button here, which we'll talk about um, maybe in another video. But then you hit create, and then it would basically populate this structure. And this is really good when you're online and HTML5 is great, and you don't necessarily need to have 
the native experience, but what if I do want that native experience and how much effort and uh, how much time is it going to take me to do that? So let's pop back to the web IDE. And then you can see here on the left hand side, we've got this police badge for the MDK. We'll click on it. And then right here underneath incident reporting, we now have, I mean, all these projects are specific to the MDK, but in particular, this incident reporting one, if I were just to show you as one example, maybe the <clears throat> safety incident uh, list, which shows basically a table of incidents and you have you know your mappings that you would expect to see and anybody that's used the um the ui5 editors this might look a little bit familiar to you but essentially down the left hand side here we do our mapping to the service itself and we do the mapping of the properties uh, on the page to those odata service um, properties and of course you know the service is what points us to where we're going to get the data from and to just one other thing, if I show you the detail page, um, here's a detail page uh, for the safety incident app. So on the you have priority, it's mapped to incident priority, reported by, mapped to reported by. So pretty basic page, um, but nonetheless, it's two forms, screens, configured with drag and drop type of functionality. You can see there's a fair number of, of widgets that you could use to create your mobile applications. And then of course you have this outline view, which allows you to get a kind of a view on terms of how things are, are laid out, which is nice. But um, when you're uh, looking to connect this up, see here, uh, is it here? No, here. Um, you'll notice, or maybe you didn't notice the name of the destination that I had shown about two minutes ago inside the mobile services configuration was EHS APM. So this is how we specify to the app. Yep, here's a destination. It uses the destination provided in the mobile services and that's how it knows and that's where it can get the data from. So that's kind of the overview of how you build a, an application with the MDK. And then basically what happens is you do a deploy and activate. And then when you do a deploy and activate, it basically builds it all up, packages it, sends it to mobile services, and then that application sits there in mobile services until a mobile application connects. So let's just take a quick look and see what that would look like. See if I can't get this um, connected here. All right, so let's pick some screen mirroring. Now you should see my cell phone. Let's log in. And at the bottom of the screen, you can see a incident management app, which I will now click on. And so what it does now is it reaches out um, right away just prior to getting into the app, you could see that, you know, one of the beautiful things about using a, a native type of application is that you can take advantage of some of the, the truly special features on a mobile phone, such as the ability to do facial recognition with on an Apple device, which is just awesome. And so we basically authenticate and then the application comes up and, you know, back on uh, the screen here, we would have seen a couple of pages, but on the main page, <clears throat> Uh, sorry, on the pages you see employee and safety incident, which is the two that we see there. And then you see on the screen here, incidents and employees. So you have two. And then when we click on incidents, we're going to see a list of all the incidents. Now, for some reason, I'm seeing it, but the reflector is not showing it. I don't know why. If I click on, oh, if you click on one of the incidents, 
OK, let me go back. Sorry. So there is a list of incidents. You can see that we have a, um, by default, there's a barcode scanner built in, which I don't have a barcode to um, scan. We also have item search. And we have the three incidents that we can click through. You can also see, as an example, the response time is really, really nice. Very, very smooth to navigate back and forth. Um, and you can also click the plus. <clears throat> so if I click the plus button, and hit an attachment, take photo, I don't know, uh, my, uh, my power adapter is broken. Let's do that. I'll, I'll flag it as high. My category is a uh, you know, harbor issue. And of course, all the navigation is the standard um, broken power supply or iPad. And then we default the date, skills required, I'll say um, networking. And then we can say done. And then what will happen is that application will use the old data service provided by CAP and then store that incident. So now we can see we've got uh, four incidents, which we only uh, had uh, two minutes ago. I can go back in and I can view the, uh, view the image, sorry, if I want. Sometimes, it, depending on the size of the image that you got set up on your phone, it might take you know one or two seconds, but there's my power adapter. Yeah, we're way to go. So that's kind of a, a quick introduction comparison, UI5, safety incident management, mobile development kit being used to create an application. Um, using the perspective in the web IDE and then being used in conjunction with the mobile services client to render a native application based on not a single line of native code in the web IDE. And of course, if I had an Android device, it would run the same way over there as well. Anyway, if you have any questions, um, shoot me a quick note, but the power of the platform is always when we bring together multiple services. So in this case, MDK meets CAP, Nicely done.